I'm sure every single person watching this video has had one of those players that's maybe a bit lower rated than the average, but plays better than everyone else in your squad. Maybe you preferred using someone like Timo Werner over Thomas Muller. Maybe it was Ansu Fati being a better striker for you than Robert Lewandowski. Well today, we're looking at exactly what makes a player perform and showing how little overall actually matters on FIFA career mode. Firstly though, how exactly is overall actually calculated? Every single stat in FIFA is given a weight depending on the player's position. So for example, important stats for a central midfielder could be something like short passing. This means that every time you increase short passing, the overall will improve faster than if you increase something like finishing. It's the exact opposite for a striker. For a striker, improving finishing will make their overall grow faster than if you were improving short passing at the same speed. The majority of these attribute weights actually make good sense, but things like jumping actually only improve a centre back's overall, despite being important for basically every position and especially at striker. Composure is another one that is weightless for every single position, meaning the same overall will be had no matter if they have 99 or 1 composure. This is a really important stat for almost every position, so it doesn't make a huge amount of sense why it costs nothing when it comes to overall rating. The weighting system means you can actually target specific attributes for certain positions to get improvements maybe without using any of their potential. So if you're using a 4-2-3-1 formation with central midfielders instead of central defensive midfielders, you can actually have both central midfielders with 99 sprint speed, 99 marking, 99 jumping and 99 strength, but none of these stats will actually affect their overall. So if every other stat is the same, they won't actually go up in overall rating. It was figuring this out that actually made me make this video. The title of the video hopefully now makes sense because overall ratings really don't matter that much in FIFA 23 career mode. Unless it actually does. Why don't we look at how overall rating applies to simulating games, an area where it's actually very, very important. A few years ago, I did a poll and almost 95% of people said they simulate at least one game every season. How can you make sure your simulated games go the way they expect you to do? Well, to summarize on how simulating a game works, each game has a home and away bias. The home team is always more likely to win, but it's nowhere near guaranteed that they will win. The overall ratings for each team is factored in here. With better players increasing the odds of winning, even a 99 rated team won't be 100% sure to win. Because of how simulating games works, players' abilities beyond their overall have no impact. It doesn't matter if you've got a 99 pace striker up against a 40 pace centre back, they'll have the same odds of scoring in FIFA 23. In fact, we can look at some of the simulation odds from one of the older FIFA games. I'll keep this super quick because it's a lot of information, but on screen right now you can see what impacts simulation games. Each number here is how much they affect the outcome of a simulated match. I can't imagine it's changed too much since then, with 78% of the win odds based on the difference between the overall ratings of your team and the team that you're playing against. So this is an example of why overall rating is important, but if you don't simulate games, there's only two things you really should be looking at when judging a player's stats. The first, of course, is to look at the player's attributes. This is the most important thing that fully scouting a player can do. Ignore their overall rating and instead look at the six areas that you can split a player into. You should have a good idea of what each position in your formation needs before you even go out to sign any players. If you want a target man striker, look at the player's physical, shooting and passing stats in this little six-way attribute grid. If you can find a player that fits this role perfectly, they'll most likely play better than someone who's 5 to 10 overall higher rated, but maybe less suited to the role that you want them to play. Maybe you want a modern attacking fullback. For this kind of player, have a look at pace, dribbling and defending. Try and work out which three areas are the most important for every single position in your formation and sign your players based on this. While looking at stats, also look at work rates. The ultimate team community puts work rates above almost all other stats because it's basically the one thing they can't change with chemistry styles. There is a reason for this. Certain combinations of work rates just seem to work better than others. For example, if you are running that 4-2-3-1 we mentioned earlier in your career mode save, you'll probably want your two midfielders to be high-high and medium-high on work rates. 
You could splash the cash, get the two best midfielders in the game, but if they're both focusing more on attack with high attacking work rates and low defensive work rates, you're just going to get smashed on the counter every single game because they won't actually bother to track back. In a recent video, and I'll link it in the top right of this one right now, I spoke about improving the players at the fastest way possible. Development plans are the best way of doing this without using up potential. As we said at the start of today's video, certain stats are weighted heavier for certain positions. So if you can pick out the right development plan to improve weaknesses in a player's game, they can really improve rapidly without actually improving their overall and therefore using potential. On average, if you pick the right one for the right player, they can grow in about 6 overall per season, but you can get some stats to go up by 10 if you are focusing on ones that actually don't have any weight for that position. This can allow you to max out certain areas without increasing overall, which is really important if you're trying to play in a certain way and you prefer having more well-rounded players. Hopefully you can see by now that picking your side based on only overall rating is a bad idea unless you're simulating basically every game. It's almost always worth it to take more time, have a look at the player's actual stats instead of their overall and figure out where you can slot them in your team. You can even do extra things like maybe have players who can play in two or three roles. Let's take one of those hypothetical midfielders from the start of the video, where they have 99 sprint speed, marking, jumping and strength. If they're over about 6 foot tall, the chances are you can actually just play them at centre mid without actually retraining their position and therefore affecting their overall. A lot of the time, centre midfielders will also make good fullbacks depending on which foot they have. If they're left footed, play them left back. If they're right footed, play them right back. Similarly, wingers are usually quite good at striker and finishing doesn't actually impact their overall quite as much. This means that the game will sometimes generate wingers with really, really high striker stats. Of course, you can retrain them, but that will use up their potential. Whereas if you just play them at striker, I don't think it really has too much effect on how they actually play in game. There are actually some crazy examples of real life players that you can slightly train up and they will be insane at different roles. For example, someone like Ashraf Hakimi. He's got 75 finishing despite being a right back. If you put him on a development plan that's boosting up his finishing, if you can get it up to 85, then Hakimi is actually an 82 rated striker despite being a right back. While you're improving his finishing, I'm sure his sprint speed, his strength, his shot power, everything will also be going up. So you can literally play Hakimi as a striker with really good stats without actually using any of his potential. Hopefully by now you can see that there's a a lot of different ways of playing FIFA where you just basically ignore the overall rating thing and that just hopefully proves that overall ratings really do not matter on FIFA. I'm sure if you take your time to look at stats, work rates, even weak foot and age, you'll be more successful than if you ever paid any attention to the player's overall rating. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully you might have learned a little bit how overall ratings are actually generated. If you did, like the video, subscribe if you want to see more like this and check out the two videos on the screen right now. Thank you for watching. Cheers and goodbye.